This is the TPN series Takamo conversion kit for the Sierra One. Uh, one of the interesting points is uh, that once I did a conversion, I actually managed to get a 98 style retractable stock to fit this gun. Uh, previously, this was not possible without a modification. Um, the front grip, I did have some issues to fit on there. I was expecting because it is a conversion kit for the TPN series, it should fit. Uh, TPN accessories, uh, that's not the case. I actually have to grind out a piece right in there for the for the plastic for and for the screw and everything go through. Uh, otherwise, I couldn't get that grip on there properly. Uh, it does have some other issues, I'll discuss that later. Uh, the airline, as you can see, it's not like the 98. There is a gap here and the airline runs down. Okay. Uh, trigger frame is a little bit, I think, shorter than the original one or it's just tucked up more. Uh, anyways, you'll notice when you're putting the kit together, it does fit a little bit differently. Um, uh, trigger itself, you'll notice this is, uh, this is a double trigger. This comes with the Takamo conversion kit. Um, also, the e-grip, when I originally tried to use the e-grip with this, uh, the firing pin was mm, too long. Um, in my original e-grip kit, I did find another firing pin, which was a little bit shorter. Uh, I still couldn't get that to work properly. I was getting full auto fire when I wanted semi-auto. And then I gave up, I converted it, the gun back to semi-auto. Uh, with semi-auto, I do find that the trigger pull is very short. Okay, as you can see, it really doesn't take much. Um, so right now this works very well, a little bit more on the trigger. Okay, addition uh, doesn't really bother me. Uh, I would have probably preferred the the, the look of uh, the M4 with just a just a single standard trigger. Uh, there's really no benefit to to the lower portion, uh, especially when you're not using E grip and you're not double finger firing. When you're single firing, uh, this would actually make your trigger pull longer because you know your your pin's right there. So I mean, it's a longer lever point is actually beneficial to you to fire from the upper one. I might actually end up trimming this, you know, cut it down to size. Um, the original trigger does not does not fit the Takamo, so unfortunately whether I want it or not, I am stuck with this. Uh, the safety. Uh, safety, again, another issue. Um, I think the only resolution to this is to try to clean up the hole a little bit there was some burr from I guess when they made the mold uh, so all this will require is just you know just a little bit of work clean it up a little bit work it in and out right now it's a little bit stiff but it's good because it doesn't come loose um, so next I'm gonna kind of show you the gun uh, more bare bone you know I've got all these accessories and bits and pieces on here so I'm not going to take it apart for you. There's no point. There's other videos that show you that, uh, and they, you know, they get to the point. I'm just going to show you some of the, the other interesting points about this. Okay, skip forward. Uh, there's the gun. I've, I've got the sling out of the way, so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. So right there, in the original location, right in there, is your velocity adjustment. Next little point. On the other side of the gun, right there, that hole. Um, I guess that would be either for the 98 or the A5, I'm not sure. Anyways, the, the hole's left over. I'm going to figure out some way of plugging it. Um, it's got all the ports if you want to run a cyclone feed. Um, it's not a dual feed weapon. Um, if you can refer to it as a weapon. But anyways, um, over here, where you see that, that screw sitting right there? Right there in that little screw. That's your ball stop. Um, if you remove that to, let's say, put on your cyclone feed or feed neck or whatever else you want to use, um, that removes the ball stopper. So now if you want to do magazine fed, there's nothing stopping the balls, which basically means it cannot be used as a dual feed system. You can't feed mag and at the same time feed cyclone. Um, because the ball stop, you well, basically for the mag system, would, the ball stopper would be gone. Um, I don't know if there's another resolution for this. I I'm sure there's another way around it. There's there's always a way to f to correct these things. Okay, other side of the gun again. Okay, now just you know, one hand you're holding the gun, and with the other hand you have to try to 
hit the mag release, which is underneath there. So it's kind of awkward. Anyways, gonna hit that and get the mag out. I'll come back to this. Okay. Um, this pin right here, uh, this is what holds this whole section in place. You release this, this whole piece swivels down. So with that pin out, now this, first of all, swivels down, and then, with a bit of finesse, can be removed. And this gives you basically access if you need to, you know, clean out the paint, that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, this also gives you access to this screw right here, uh, which is somewhat holding the front grip. And this is where there was a piece right there that I had to cut out in order to get, you know, on the Sierra one, how it's got the little piece of plastic sticking out right there for a screw to go into. That wouldn't normally fit on a Takamo um, because that's blocked up there. So I had to actually grind that out and in order for this to slide back. Um, after the first game, unfortunately, the plastic piece broke because I had to cut that down a little bit to make everything work. So right now it's just kind of barely hanging on. Uh, mostly with tape on the front of the barrel and that's the whole reason why I got this cheap red dot up here is again you can see kind of touching there so you know put all these things together this is what actually holds the front grip for me right now so you know it's kind of too bad that it didn't make the the necessary setup to to reuse your front grip I mean it is a conversion for a Sierra it should be able to fit Sierra accessories uh, the front barrel, I do find it, it's a good tight fit, maybe a little bit too tight. I do find that the the O-ring on the barrel tends to kind of just get stuck right there. A little bit of lubrication does help. Um, so I'm going to come back to the trigger frame because this is where I think most of the problems lie. Um, now, when I watched the, the tutorial video on how to put the trigger frame together, they said, you know, the, the pins are preset from the factory and all that. Well, no, they're not. And while trying to preset the pins, I did break off a piece of my gun on the other side. And it's kind of hard to make out, but you can kind of see a hole right there. And that's one of the pins for the trigger frame. Uh, the trigger frame is a pin in the butt to put together. It's also an extreme pain in the butt to take apart. Uh, let's say that you were going to take your gun apart. You know, you want to clean it, you want to fix it up, whatever you want to do. Okay, so here's what you have to do. Got to take off the front grip. Got to remove this, this guy right here along with your magazine. Okay, uh, then you have, you know, all your, all your set screws, you know, for all your accessories, all those set screws, everything there. Okay. Uh, then you have uh, this one here, which actually requires two Allen keys. One Allen key at the bottom, one Allen key on top. Oh, look at that, it's already loose. <laughs> Next one here. This one, same thing here. This one requires an Allen key on top, Allen key on the bottom. You've got to use two Allen keys together. If you're thinking about field stripping, uh, forget it. And this takes lots and lots of time. Okay, then you got these screws here. You've got another screw there. You've got another screw there there you've got two more here um, then you very carefully take it apart uh, you're gonna have a bunch of springs and stuff jump out all over the place um, you're gonna have this piece here tends to jump out although it does sit fairly firmly which is nice it's, it's a nice tight fit once you do have everything put together um, you're gonna have to remove you know if you still have your black rubber this is not the original one but anyways you're gonna have to remove that um, and then you'll be exposed to the trigger frame and believe me once you've put this trigger frame together you do not want to try to take it apart again uh, it is a pain in the ass you basically got to try to pry in there with uh, like a thin screwdriver or a knife or something and try to like kind of like split the frame together uh, sorry split the flame frame apart and then that gives you access to all the trigger setup um, Again, like I said, you know, I'm 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 pleased with the with how it came out. 
this like I said the safety is a little bit stiff but it works in the end it took a little bit of work once you have it all working it works well okay this is your magazine okay now I'm not a particular fan of this but at the bottom of the mag here there's a little piece of plastic that, that kind of just sits in there you can kind of pull it out and that's it right there kind of an awkward looking little piece of plastic and what this does is it actually fits right on to the winding piece for the spring so what you can do is it's actually easier to wind up your spring next point this is your release right here right on top this little piece of plastic right there um, now many people say that it gets snagged on their equipment I haven't really had any issues with it snagging then again I haven't used this this gun too much so I'm sure eventually I'll probably have a problem so as soon as your gun as soon as you insert the magazine your gun actually a little piece inside that presses on this and that releases a spring uh, I find 19 pain poles works better than 20 I don't retract the spring all the way I find it puts too much tension on pain pole number 20 um, so I prefer 19 with the spring almost at the very end uh, so when I insert my last pain pole it kinda just sits there nicely and also what that does is if by accident this piece gets pressed down when I have 19 pain poles, I find it doesn't release the you know doesn't release a 19th pain pole. But if I have 20, I find that when it does this, the 20th pain pole it tends to basically leave. Okay, um, there's a lot of spring tension. I gotta admit, you don't you do not want to leave your your pain poles under tension for too long. They're definitely gonna get some flat spots. Also, um, if you've let's say cranked this spring all the way down and you've loaded 17 paint balls so you can imagine there's gonna be gaps between the paint balls or even right at the very top you might have you know three empty spaces when that spring gets released you know think about all the acceleration of that spring because it got lots of tension and that spring will just basically crush the paint balls um, so you do want to like I said you want to have your mag loaded to the point where your last paint ball sitting right there at the very end with this bring tension right behind it um, again if you don't do it just right you end up crushing paint balls I mean easy solution yeah you load 20 but again I do find that you know if this gets pressed it releases the paint balls so and again, again I just simply load 19 solves the problem okay now coming back to the breach um, again if you have loaded 20 paint balls remember there's a little bit of spring tension right at the very end and you know middle of a game you don't exactly have time to be very careful of trying to get this in there and it is a little bit you know a tight fit so what I would happen is you know sometimes it would hit against the side of the gun here and then that would actually you know press down on this and a paintball would release and go flying over the place and then there would be a gap and I would insert the mag and the spring would fire in and chop paintballs inside again stick to 19 once you do have that in though uh, the mag goes in fairly easy, just a gun sliding on the table right now. So, overall, the gun has a very skinny profile. And I like that there's no no hopper, no, no neck feed. There's nothing here kind of to get in the way. Um, some people say that the mag is very long actually I like the way it looks I like the way it feels um, you know you definitely want to get yourself some extra mags trust me two mags is nothing uh, you're not gonna get through much of a paintball game with two magazines uh, I've got about six mags and you know I still run short once or twice um, there you go the TPN series Takamo conversion kit for the Sierra one completed and working uh, for the total package, you're looking at, you know, let's say about five or six magazines, you're looking at approximately just under $300.
it's definitely wor worth it. Uh, it. It will take you some quite a bit of time to get the kinks worked out. Once you do have the kinks worked out, I highly recommend the kit. It's a ton of fun to use, draws lots of attention.